Good evening. I would like to call this meeting of the School District of West Dallas, West Milwaukee et al. to order, please. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> Mr. Lee, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Suzette, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Sue Jackie is present. In meeting. Ms. Curran. Here. Mr. Bailey. Here. Mr. Lee. Here. Mr. Eustra. Here. Mrs. Justum. Here. Ms. Emmons. Here. Mr. Keller. Here. President Signature. Present. Public notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the open meeting laws of the state of Wisconsin. Board members and Dr. Lexman, any additions, corrections, or modifications to tonight's agenda? I have no requests. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to public comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Just want to remind people that when you approach the uh, podium, please give your name and address for the record. Our policy or our practice is to allow everybody three minutes. Uh, we do have a timer that will go off. Uh, at three, we'll let you, we'll ask you to wind down then if you still haven't finished your comments. We do not make any public responses at this meeting, but if you have a specific question that will be addressed either by Dr. Lexman or myself before the following next regularly scheduled board meeting. Uh, Amanda Rettberg, did I say that right? Yes. Come on up here. Hello, uh, my name is Amanda Rutberg and I live at 3885 South Pole Drive in New Berlin. And I'm here to give a couple of comments about the territory transfer th for the school district. My, um, my, my city, my community is New Berlin. We have lived there and I feel as a family we've been excluded from the school district itself. My son, for instance, he's involved in Boy Scouts. He's in a troop in New Berlin. When his friends ask him what school will you, what high school will you go to, will you go to Ike or West? Neither. I'm not. That's I can't. Why you live in New Berlin? That's not my school district. My son is in the recreational basketball program in New Berlin. When his friends ask him, it's the same thing. It's exclu exclusion. We live in New Berlin. We want to be part of. We're part of the community. Why can't we be part of the school system? And furthermore, I think New Berlin thinks we're part of the school system. 5, 12 a.m. on Friday morning, it wasn't West Dallas, West Milwaukee who called us to say it's a school day. It was New Berlin. New Berlin sends us updates for how, what wonderful things that they're doing at Eisenhower. We can't go there. And probably <laughs> what bothers my husband and I the most, when we go to the polls to vote, we are consistently given the ballot for the New Berlin School District, of which we have to say, we, we can't, if we're, vo if we're bo voting on for the who's going to be on the school board, we're West No, I'm pretty sure you live in New Berlin, of which we have to say, no, we don't. I mean, we, yes, we live in New Berlin, but we're not part of that school district. I don't understand why we can't. New Berlin is our city. It's, it's our community. It's where my family is. All we want to do is be part of the school system, and yet we can't because you, you're sitting West Dallas, West Milwaukee, but New Berlin is my city, it's my community, and all I'm asking is that my children can be part of that. And especially if New Berlin's willing to take us, why not? I, I don't want to be excluded anymore. I want to be included in my entire community. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Deb Neuroth. My name is Deb Neuroth. My address is 3840 South <coughs> Pole Drive, New Berlin. I have a few additional reasons for uh, attempting a territory transfer. Currently, all school board members are West Allis residents. There is a lack of representation for New Berlin residents living in the West Allis, West Milwaukee School District. While you may argue that a New Berlin resident may run for the board, the odds of that candidate winning is small. The number of registered West Dallas, West Milwaukee voters in the November 2017 election totaled 34,106. While I estimate New Berlin residents in the districts have approximately 2,040 eligible voters, 
This is based on the 1,040 New Berlin homes in the West Dallas School District. There could potentially be a bias against New Berlin. By definition, the equalization rate used as a portion of determining the pro property tax levy will always be detrimental to New Berlin residents who are in the West Dallas School District. Based on the demographics of both areas that show higher median income and home values in New Berlin. Due to the fact that New Berlin had a 19.7% increase in new home construction between 1990 and 1999 versus a 4.2% in West Dallas alone shows, shows newer versus older homes. New Berlin will continue to pay the higher rate. In the November 2014 West Dallas West Milwaukee District News, Superintendent Strobel's message stated that the tax levy declined for the fifth year in a row. In just a few years, we in New Berlin now have an 18.4% increase. Those who were school board members during the past few years should share responsibility for this lack of oversight. Of course, all members live in West Dallas and have not been subjected to as high of an increase as we have in New Berlin. The Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, DPI, gives district report cards each school year. As the board knows, DPI measures each district in the state using various standards to give overall accountability. Due to time constraints, I have averaged these ratings over the last five years. New Berlin has an average rating of 81.5, while West Dallas, West Milwaukee has an average of 68.4. New Berlin in the last two school years has significantly exceeded expectations while the West Dallas West Milwaukee district remains stagnant. We in New Berlin are expected to pay more to maintain the status quo. This change should have been implemented years and years ago. It only makes sense. The distance to schools for our students, sense of community, confusion for potential New Berlin home buyers, lack of representation, and it's simply a logical move. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John Mullen. <clears throat> My name is John Mulling. I live at 3850 South Pole Drive in New Berlin. I'm going to do it fast because I got a lot to say. Um, I went to uh, the library in West Dallas and found the book 100 Years of West Dallas West Milwaukee Schools. Um, here's a little quick history. There was a Cooper School at 2930 Root River Parkway uh, where New Berlin residents went from 1839 to 1939. That, that school was sold and they formed a Parkway School, which was 124th and National, east of 124th Street. 154 um, people from New Berlin asked if their kids could go to that school, which they did. Uh, Hoover School was built in New Berlin in 1966. In 1969, Parkway School was closed and all the kids went to the Hoover School in, in uh, New Berlin. Eisenhower School was built in 1969, that's 48 years ago. At that point in time, this should have been changed immediately. The people in New Berlin should have gone to that school. They got a high school, they got a great school, and this thing has continued for 48 years. It's <coughs> long overdue that this changes. There's no responsible person, no responsible person has acted in 48 years on this board or the other board. I don't know why, but it's t it was good then, it's not good now. New Berlin kids need to go to New Berlin schools. Pole Drive is a hornet's nest. 14 of 15 of the households that I went and signed the, the petition, 93.3%. The only person that didn't sign it was a school teacher at Hoover School, smart woman. I wouldn't have signed it either. Um, our, our school, our rates went up 18.4%. It's unacceptable. I'm sorry, it's just unacceptable. Here's some statistics. This year, the state is giving $11.5 billion to the Wisconsin school system. It's the highest ever allocated. In 2018, you're getting an extra $200 per student. In 2019, you're getting an extra $204 per student. That equals $1.727 million this year and $1.76 million next year. Um, this is a report through Joe Sanfilippo from the Legislative Fiscal Bureau. And it has some startling facts in here. It's a comparison of New Berlin to West Dallas, West Milwaukee. I know Marty has a copy of it because it was, it was part of the email. I copied a copy for all of you, so you have a written copy. 
This is from the State Legislative Fiscal Bureau. Thank you. And there are some real interesting statistics on here. Thank and you. I hope you study these carefully before you make your final decision. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, why don't you just pass it up? <laughs> There are some real interesting numbers in there, trust me. What I'd like to ask you to do when you make a decision on a transfer, I would like you to record each individual person, yes or no, yes or no. My dad told me if you ever want to sign a thing or send in a letter, don't send it in anonymously, you sign it or it's not worth a damn thing. You sign it. So I'd like you to, when you make your vote, yes or no, I would like it recorded in the, in the vote. There needs to be leadership from this, this group. There needs to be leadership from New Berlin. 48 years of this is nonsense. This wound needs to be healed. We need to put poor peroxide on it. We need to debride it, and we need to let it scab over. Everyone in this room, including the, guy, the camera guy in the back, knows the answer to the question, knows the right answer to the question. The New Berlin kids should be going to New Berlin schools. The elephant is laying right there, all 4,000 pounds of her. New Berlin kids on Pole Drive should be going to New Berlin schools. I live 1.1 miles from Ike. I live three miles from Hale. Again, uh, that's pretty much it. Everyone knows the right answer. If you looked into your heart deep, you know what the right answer is. We belong in the New Berlin School District. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Those were the only three individuals that had signed up to address the board this evening, but if there is anybody in the audience right now, I would invite you up to the podium. Seeing none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Great. Um, thank you. So this evening, we will start with a report from West Dallas Central High School. So welcome back. Hi. Um, hello, my name is Jose Lopez Jr. and I'm a senior at West Side Central and I'm going to tell you about what's been happening at Central. Um, on Thursday, January 18th, Central hosted its first <coughs> annual Bulldog Nation Expo which was organized by Ms. Kurlowski and Ms. Kralik. This event hosted future 8th grade students from FLW, West Milwaukee and Lane. The Bulldog Nation Expo gave our incoming 9th graders the opportunity to learn about our athletics and our academics through three different sessions all of which were chosen by the student prior to the event. Then they finished the afternoon with a club and activity fair. Our future Bulldogs gain more insight into the opportunities that await right them at Central and what life would be like for them in high school. More importantly, it gave the eighth graders the opportunity to ask questions and seek advice from our staff <laughs> on how to prepare for high school. Upon returning to the middle schools, students were asked to reflect on their experiences and identify any future questions or concerns that they had. These follow-up questions created by them range from the school's fun policy to club participation requirements to what freshmen should do if they get lost on the first day of school. These questions have since been answered and will hopefully ease the minds of our Bulldogs as they walk through the halls during their first few days of high school. A big thank you to everyone who took time to participate in this event, including teachers, student volunteers, and coaches. The Bulldog Expo helped make connections with our future Bulldogs and current staff, which will undoubtedly help create a more smooth transition for our ninth graders next year. More events will be coming to support this goal in the upcoming ones. On Tuesday, January 23rd, all Central students took part in the fourth annual Test Fest. All 9th, 10th, and 11th graders took the practice ACT, and the 12th graders had their choice of taking the practice ACT, practice UW placement test, the official ASVAB, or the official ACCUPLACER. Beyond just the ACT, stu uh, students were given the opportunity to learn more about their own skill sets via the ASVAB which will match them with potential career paths that best fit them. In addition, MATC was here providing the acupuncture for already accepted MATC students. Staff also provided support of to 20 seniors as they applied to the school and for financial aid. Test Fest is a day proven to help students be more prepared for the world of standardized tests and college readiness. Many students acknowledged that they were thankful for the ACT experience, citing they feel more prepared to take the real thing. Many students are now coming to the library and checking out ACT press prep books, uh, asking advice from the teachers for ways to study for the ACT, and are usually utilizing method test preps for skills to practice. A big thank you to Clint Karnowski for all the time and hard work he put into organizing this day. Bob Dwyer and Logan Sewell from Blum Inc. stopped by Central's workshop uh, Thursday, January 25th to reveal a brand new hinge board machine valued at over $2,000. 
This machine will allow students to cut pockets for concealed hinges, which have become the standard in the cabinet industry. On Monday, January 29th, Central parents and students were invited to attend the scheduling expo where they were able to meet with teachers of both core and elective classes. This event provided parents with an opportunity to learn more about the courses, options available for their students and to help them make choices for their schedule for the 2018-2019 school year. The next day, all students participated in scheduling day where students worked with their cor course teachers to select uh, appropriate classes for next year. Students also attended the elective Expo in the field house, where they were able to learn more about the elective choices available to them. Central counselors are working hard to ensure that our buildings are selecting appropriate classes that fit their college and career goals. They have also started hosting coffee with the counselors. Here, parents can enjoy a bagel and re-energize with a cup of joe while talking about potential concerns or ideas they have with their counselors. The topic for January was on scheduling and graduation requirements. On the first Thursday of the month, Central recognizes College Military Tech and Trades Day. Staff wear gear from the colleges they attend or military gear if they are a veteran. All students learn more about the college and career options in homeroom through a College Military Tech and Trades presentation. This month, the homeroom lesson focused on UW Waukesha, Wisconsin Lutheran College, the Air Force, and careers in painting and drywall finishing. The West Dallas Central Future Business Leaders of America chapter asked the mayor of West Dallas, Mayor Dan Devine, to come in on February 1st, 2018 to sign a proclamation declaring the week as FBLA PBL week. After he signed the proclamation, Mayor Devine talked with the group about <coughs> how he got into politics and the importance of having an experience in the business field, as it encompasses skills required in business and beyond. Students from Ms. Cairns, Ms. Spars, and Ms. Harmeyer's classes competed in Job Olympics at Arrowhead High School this week. Students competed against other schools in the area in different categories such as culinary, construction, business, job interviews, electronics, and others. Students won individual ribbons and West South Central came in fifth overall. The kids did an awesome job. Today, Ovila Latino, Latin Pride, sold Hispanic food to the staff at Central. The menu included steak, tacos, pork tamales, chicken, flautas, and bean tostadas. They offered Puerto Rican rice for a side, fine churros for dessert, and horchata to drink. The food was donated by the some of the students and their families who are a part of the club. The money will be put towards buying graduation stores for seniors in the club, thanks to Escobar for leading this group and organizing this delicious lunch. <laughs> a big congratulations to diver Caleb Emmett McCollum on placing second at the WIAA sectionals, who scored 475 points. Caleb will be diving in the WIA state meet this Saturday in Madison. Best of luck, Caleb. Another congratulations must be given to Bulldog wrestler Quentin Brown for winning the WIAA Wrestling Regional at 106 pounds. He will compete Saturday at the WIA Wrestling Sectionals. Also advancing to sectionals were Thompson Devitz, Peter Garcia, and <coughs> Tim Seymour. Best of luck on Saturday, Bulldogs. Boys basketball currently has a record of 11-7. This week, they played three games because of last Friday's game being postponed. They play at New Berlin West on Tuesday, South Milwaukee at home on Friday, and travel to St. John's Military Academy on Saturday. Girls basketball also has a busy stretch. They play at Milwaukee Lutheran on Tuesday and are home versus New Berlin West on Thursday. The girls start WIA tournament play on Tuesday, 2:20 at Brady Tech. Um, and I want to talk about some upcoming events at Central. Um, Tuesday after school, the World Language Club will be having its Mardi Gras event that will include Fat Tuesday food food, music, dancing, and games. On Thursday, February 15th, Central will be hosting its cabaret night. The concert will highlight our jazz band as well as solo and duet singers. The concert begins at 7 p.m. Central's National Art Society partnered with the Red Cross to host a bread drive on February 16th on Friday. Students and staff will be donating bread for those who have experienced disasters or injury within the community. NHS is hoping to get over 100 people to donate blood this year. NHS would like to welcome you to come and join and donate play as well. Snacks and smiles are provided. All juniors will be ta taking the ACT with writing on February 27th. The work keys will be taken the following day. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Questions or comments? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, for the, 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 the <coughs> counseling day where you guys had the parents come the night before to kind of learn about that. Do you know how my family took advantage of that to come out? I don't. I'm just curious whether that was, it's a great idea. It's yeah. funny whether a lot of parents came out and, and got to learn about the courses and mm. what their options are for their kids. So if they didn't, I hope they do next year. That's right. Sue? I went to your uh, eighth grade expo, and you were <laughs> one of the people that... Uh, that uh, 
had a table. Would you please tell a little bit about what club and what you were doing? Um, it was for our DECA club, and it's a business and leadership club that um, gets ready for marketing in the workplace. And um, I compete in the travel and tourism cluster, and I go, and I'm going to state, actually. So, yeah. So <laughs> he's going to stay. Yeah. You, you can't be so modest. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, as, as part of the course, you, you, you are excused and we go home and attend to things that you have that take priorities over our meeting. <laughs> Nothing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Nice thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So we will go on to 7.2, our school showcase this evening, and we're here to welcome what looks like a great big team from Pershing Elementary School, so come on up. Thank you so much for having us here this evening uh, so that we can discuss Pershing's bright spots, our challenges, and one uh, new unique feature that we've started this year. So as far as our bright spots, um, we've talked a lot about these things over the last number of years at the various showcases, so I just wanted to, to reintroduce some of them and talk about them. But before I do that, I'd be remiss <coughs> if I did, did not mention what a terrific staff we have at Pershing. And as Dr. Luxman said, we, had a, we have a pretty large gallery of not only uh, excellent staff members, but dedicated parents and families with us today. So just wanted to recognize them and thank them for all of their hard work. Um, they're hardworking, they're dedicated. I'm very um, uh, fortunate that we have very little to no staff turnover at Pershing. So um, it's the same teachers with our kids all the time. Uh, so that's great to see. Um, on the screen, we have uh, a few different um, ways uh, that we uh, are showing uh, our staff camaraderie. We do a back to school barbecue at the beginning of uh, every year where we, where our staff, our, excuse me, our staff serves food um, to the families who, who come uh, in early September. Um, we, during one of our professional development days last year, we went to the escape room to do a little staff bonding exercise and work on problem solving. I think Miss Blum's group escaped from the room and I think Mine did not, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, more to come later, right? <laughs> um, a couple other things that we're excited about. Um, um, actually, uh, we do a weekly shout out as well, where we, we spend time recognizing um, each other uh, via email. So what we'll do is um, we'll say thank you to like Miss Blum, for example, who might have done something during the week, or Miss Pipel or Miss Growth, um, and then Every Friday, we send it out to the staff. So there's a big running list where you can see what everyone's thanking everyone for doing uh, for them. Because really, we do depend on each other quite a bit. And it's nice to recognize the hard work and, and thank people for doing those things. Um, on this slide, once again, um, don't look at the date on the ribbon. We couldn't find the new one. But um, we just like to recognize the fact that we are have been recognized the last four years as a, a Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction School of Recognition, and hopefully the fifth is just around the corner. We should be hearing about that pretty soon. Um, and then we have a copy of our uh, most recent state report card. We are um, solidly meeting expectations, um, and we were only four tenths of a point away this year <laughs> from exceeding expectations. So, um, you know, we spend a little time uh, you know, pouting about that a little bit, but then we get right back to work um, with the staff and the kids and the families to to try to make sure that we boost that up a little bit so that we're exceeding expectations in the future. Um, we're very much into family engagement at Pershing, so um, we have family STEM projects that I, I, actually we reported out last year. We had a couple teachers who showed some of the family STEM projects that we do. Um, we had a lot of uh, family nights. So for example, with the Star, with Star Wars being so big the last few years, uh, we had a Star Wars theme night last year uh, for math. And instead of May the Force be with you, the big model that for that was May the Facts be with you. Um, with the Olympics, uh, Winter Olympics going on right now in South Korea, 
we have, uh, I believe February 22nd, right? February 22nd, we have uh, a math night that's in the theme is based on the Olympics. So a lot of fun uh, activities for the students and their families um, uh, always at Pershing. Uh, lunch and Learn is another thing uh, where uh, a couple of my kindergarten teachers got together and they wanted to, and this just happened not too long ago, they wanted to bring uh, the, the, the families in of our 5K students and really uh, talk to them about what they would see uh, in reading and how our program works. We try to get the families of our, of our youngest learners so that they can really understand what we're doing. Um, and then, and then, you know, I, I learned early on as a principal, if you feed them, they will come. <laughs> so uh, we made sure that it was a lunch and learn. And we have a quick little 50 second video clip. I think I, I heard that I was uh, supposed to only do 15 or 20 minutes today, so I think we cut this down from about 20 minutes to 50 seconds. A yep. so. <laughs> <laughs> um, couple other things that we've talked about in the past, we, we have that continued partnership with the goal, or excuse me, with um, the Urban Ecology Center, which is right in our backyard on 38th and Pierce, where really we bring an outdoor classroom, <laughs> uh, science classroom right to our students. Um, we have Golden Ages Luncheon in West Milwaukee where we, um, along with the village, uh, we host a luncheon right around Christmas time for our senior citizens in our community. Um, this year we have a brand new Lego Robotics Club that we've started that Ms. Blum and Ms. Pipo uh, are working with the students a couple days a week along with our maker space that, that, is, uh, that we are continuing. Uh, in the past, we've also talked about our bilingual book club where uh, we have a number of our ELL students. We have a very large ELL population um, where about 20% of our students speak English as a second language. And so we have uh, one of our ELL teacher um, has a bilingual book club where we have a partnership with a uh, sister school in Nicaragua, uh, Los, uh, Los Brazos de Amor, which um, we uh, have fundraisers to try to buy books um, to donate to them. So those are our bright spots. Um, and when we, when I was talking to Ms. Blum, who's my academic dean, about challenges, we talked a little bit more about how we don't like the word challenges. What we want to do is turn them in, into opportunities. So um, at Pershing, um, one thing that we're very proud of is that we um, know that we do have some students who come through our doors each day who might be uh, at different points throughout the year. Do, uh, Exper be experiencing different trauma in their lives. And so we feel that we have a very strong system in place to deal with the trauma, a lot of social emotional regulation, and to deal with behavior problems. So on the screen, for example, we have um, a little sheet that I use quite a bit and some other staff members use um, when it comes to restorative practices. It use we have a universal clip system, so students can clip up or down based on um, behavior. Um, and it used to be if a student maybe was like on orange or red, which are at the bottom, a lot of times it would be phone call home, detention, things like that. Now what I like to do is really talk to the kids about how their behavior impacted or had an effect on other people in the classroom, whether it be the other students or the teacher, and we talk about it. And then we have the students really fill out a form, and then that's really their ticket back in the classroom because then they make a plan for how they are going to make things right. And so we've gone more toward that system versus just a punitive system. Um, we have what we call zones of regulation, which we talk to the students quite a bit about how they're feeling, why they're feeling that way, what they can do, what strategies they can uh, use to, to feel better, to calm down. 
We also have therapy dogs that we bring in. Uh, we have a couple of greyhounds um, that we bring in, some retired racing dogs that are gentle with the kids. Um, their handlers are terrific. Uh, so some of our students who might really be struggling um, with some um, you know, social emotional regulation, uh, they love working with the animals and working with the service dogs, or the therapy dogs, excuse me. Uh, another thing that we are going to start delving into at Pershing is something called Peace Corners. Um, and so I just want to just explain what Peace Corners is uh, quickly. Um, and I can't take credit for it. It comes from a lot of the great work that is being done at Walker Elementary um, to provide a trauma-sensitive learning environment to all students. The intention of Peace Corners is to keep students in the classroom, continue to build strong relationships with their teachers, and be able to create a safe space where students are able to regulate their emotions within the classroom. So what happened is my guidance counselor, Brooke Smith, um, uh, needed some, some money to purchase some things, so she did a donor's choose, and just recently, I believe it was last week, we uh, were able to finally get all the money, uh, $912, to purchase things such as vibrating pillows, um, Mandela coloring books, Play-Doh, noise canceling headphones, timers, um, a lot of different things that uh, we're going to be using with our students uh, when they're, you know, facing some difficulties in the classroom. Because once again, we want to be able to, instead of sending them home or sending them always to the counselor or someone to talk to, we can have some spaces right in their classrooms where they have things for them right there that can help settle them down. We're using one of our uh, afternoons of our uh, PD day to um, next week uh, to train the staff um, on um, uh, Peace Corners and we're very excited about it. We're also gonna be purchasing stress balls to add to the Peace Corners, breathing balls, a lot of the mind jars that we've already, already uh, have in a lot of the classrooms that come from the mindfulness training that we've uh, been doing throughout the district. Students will learn additional social thinking lessons within the SEL curriculum that will address recognizing triggers, understanding the size of the problem. Um, they will learn specific PBS expectations for using the Peace Corner and what happens if the expectations are not followed. The students are explicitly taught how to use each calming tool to regulate their emotions before it is placed in their uh, classroom Peace Corner. Expectations and video tutorials for each tool will be avail available for students in each Peace Corner. When the rollout is completed, there will be a Peace Corner in every classroom at Pershing, including our <coughs> specials. We've noticed the last couple of years that's where we've had a lot of some of the misbehavior the students struggling is when they're not in their regular ed classroom, or, or the regular classroom, I should say, but when they go to gym or they go to music and they're with a different teacher who might have different rules or different expectations. So we wanna make sure that you know students, when they're away, uh, away from their, te their regular classroom teacher who they have uh, a very strong relationship with, we want uh, the students to be able to handle it when they go elsewhere. And Finally, um, something unique to Pershing this year is um, Service Learning Club. And last um, August, when the teachers returned, I talked to them really about creating some type of identity, something that Pershing can really uh, be known for. The staff members felt that we had a very strong um, community, community of learners, community of parents, and a community where we like to, to help out. Um, and so we decided to create a service learning uh, club. Um, so what we did is we have extended our popular jobs program to provide more opportunities outside of the walls of the school. We've had a very strong jobs program where students had jobs within the school, but now we've uh, created it to where it, it takes place outside of the school as well. Uh, we stress the benefits that service learning has for our students and how it can teach them lifelong skills that they can use in the real world. So far this year, our um, service, uh, service Learning Club members have done things such as they hosted our Golden Agers luncheon. They participated in a gift program at the Village of Manor Park that I know Dr. Lexman uh, was at. Um, so they, uh, they worked at our Sa Santa's Secret Gift Shop experience by helping our younger students shop for gifts for family members. They worked at our PTA bake sales. And once again, we are in the initial stages, so there's a lot more learning that needs to be done. Um, and so at this time, I've brought three of our students who will be answering some questions about our service learning club. 
So if you could all join me in welcoming Brianna, Nathan, and Peyton. And we're going to start with Brianna, and I have two questions to ask Brianna. The first one is, Brianna, can you please tell uh, the, the school board and those in attendance, uh, why did you decide to join the Service Learning Club? I joined the Service Learning Club because I love to help others and I love to do extracurricular things. It gives me a smile to see others smile when they see me. My job is helping the third graders. What I do is I help them get their work done for the week and I help them if they struggle. I, how I think my job prepares me for the real world is it shows me how to help younger students and it shows me how to be a teacher. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brianna. And now I'm going to go to Peyton. Peyton, can you please tell everyone how uh, did you become a member and then how do you make sure that uh, to maintain your membership status in the Service Learning Club? To join, I had to fill out an application that asked me responsibilities and interest. Then I had to get two letters of recommendation from adults. To maintain my status, I had I have to show good behavior. We have a color we have a color chart and if we stay on our good colors, green, blue and purple, we are okay. If we are on the bad colors, we get three strikes and then we are out. One of my jobs is helping our custodian, Mr. Jeff. I scuff the floors to clean up the marks. My other job is helping our 4K students to get ready to go home at the end of the school day. These jobs prepare me for the world because they help me learn how to care for children and learn how to clean my environment. I love the Service Learning Club because it helps me prepare for my future. All right, thank you, Peyton. And last but certainly not least, we have Nathan. Nathan, can you please explain to everyone uh, when do club members do their job? Club members have assigned job times, which the teachers give them. For example, me and Ray, a fellow student, do our job right after lunch. My job is helping clean up tables right after lunch so that our custodian can clean our floors. This job helps prepare me for the real world because it teaches you responsibility while respecting the environment. All right. Thank you to, to each and every one of you. And job well done. Uh, our next steps for the Service Learning Club, there's a lot of work that we still need to do. We really want to create a theme-based program uh, beginning next year where every grade level has a service learning project or theme that they're responsible for. Um, and then personally, I'm going to be reaching out to some fellow administrators in neighboring districts such as Greendale, um, who has a very, um, uh, very nice service learning club uh, to learn a little bit more about uh, how they began their program and how to make it even more successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments, board members? Bill? I just really, I really like that. That's really cool. Uh, and we have that become part of <coughs> all of our schools. Mm -hmm. That would be really, really <coughs> cool to see a lead that, you know. This is, that's very important. I think that's what we need. Thank you very much. Definitely. Yeah. With uh, the, I was going to kind of piggyback on that. You know, as the kids progress, Joe, you, know, you said this is the first year of service mm -hmm. learning. As the kids progress, and not that we want you guys to grow up anytime immediately <laughs> fast, <coughs> but as they progress in, the, in intermediate school and high school, what that might look like and how mm -hmm. this can grow into West and FLW mm -hmm. and Lane and what that might look like in the high schools and how that continues to evolve in the high school communities. And now we've got these volunteers and, you know, this philanthropic group mm -hmm. of, of students and they've learned it at such a young age and they go out into the world to become giving people. I mean, I think that's that's how you do your job is to create this, this universe of giving, caring, <coughs> kind yeah. people. Yeah, so absolutely. And, and, that, and, and we're totally excited for it. And even though we're, we're in our first year, we're looking forward to seeing how it, you know, yeah. how it progresses. Thank Dan? You. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I'd like to thank you and your staff for the initiative to go ahead and start a program like this. It's never easy. And that's, uh, that's your commitment as far as getting money for the school on your own. I'd also like to compliment the three of you. I think you're well on your way to be able to become uh, very communication-wise with students as well as grown-ups. You, you have some very good uh, speaking tactics. The only thing I can say is next time, please bring the microphone a little bit closer. <laughs> but other than that, oh, I think you did a fantastic oh, job. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you broke your heart. What's that? Well, <laughs> it might be our fault. That's, that's, that's my fault. Like this, it didn't make a lot of noise. Uh, that's, that's my fault, actually, because we practice quite a bit, and I told them, don't get too 
close the microphone because yeah, I've been yeah, scolded <laughs> in the past. So that is my fault. Okay, well, we'll blame that on you, but you did a really fine job. And I, I, I think representing your school and the district is, is really nice to see. And I personally think you deserve a little round of applause. Noah? I, I really like this. We live in such a me-first society these days. <clears throat> this is a, an example of an intangible skill. It's you, know, you can't have a class about this, about being thinking of others, thinking of the world in general, and not just what you need and what my immediate family needs, but it's it's about what does everyone need. And so I think that's a great example of, of an intangible skill that will be useful in anything that they decide to do uh, in their lives. So I definitely uh, have big kudos for that. I hope. I don't know if we have other things in other schools that are similar to this, but I would strongly encourage uh, maybe bringing it up to other district, uh, district schools as well because sure. I think it is a great intangible that will get you far in this world, especially these days. Thank you. Heather? I was just going to suggest that you reach out to the high schools, to the ACT clubs, and I know that they're high schoolers, but they might have ideas for you. And the Rotary Club in West Dallas is one who works with the high school clubs, and maybe they have things to work with you guys to help you get you rolling. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Pep. Um, all good ideas. Actually, there's, there's so much service learning going on at the at the high school level with NHS, National Honor Society. So you just created a really good step for them to keep themselves moving. Uh, I believe most of the schools have got student council too. So I think there's a lot of student learning <laughs> services going on that help. It might be nice to see them coordinate a little more. But I actually want to speak to you on a different topic, uh, your family engagement and what you yourself, Steve, have been doing to help the community of Pershing grow. Uh, it's just been such a pleasure over time to have you come here year after year and present for Pershing. And with the difficulty factor, you have a bridging to very distinct communities, uh, the Spanish, Latin groupings, and our English-speaking student. You've just done a marvelous job. Your student report card and the growth that you have achieved uh, it's been a struggle, and you have really met the challenge. And, and things like your family engagement, relating the students to current events and making it exciting for families to share with their students coming into the schools, just keeps them all engaged, excited about what they're learning, and <coughs> meeting and greeting with one another to the point of becoming friends, friends that will carry on as they grow with the school district. So congratulations. Job well done. Thanks to all the staff for coming. And students, you were marvelous. Just a delight to have you all. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Thank you. Thanks, staff, for showing us to be supportive. Thank you, students. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, we'll keep on moving. Uh, 7.3 is the legislative update. And as we've started to do, and with Brian's help, um, we're sharing more detailed information about different assembly bills or Senate bills that are moving through the process. I'm not going to read all of that like we did a couple weeks ago, but it's just more background for the board and the public that um, wants to get more familiar with education policy in the state. So there was a blue ribbon <coughs> commission, excuse me, on school funding um, that uh, is looking again at, you know, is funding equitable? Are there better ways for us to develop the f um, and evolve the funding formula? Um, so the public hearings are being held. So there was one on February 2nd at James Madison Academic Campus in Milwaukee. And uh, the commission is hearing testimony from invited speakers, but these included representatives from Milwaukee Public Schools, Southeast Wisconsin School Alliance, which we're a part of, and then School Choice Wisconsin. So it's not just funding for traditional public schools, but how um, charter schools are funded, how the voucher schools are funded is all part of the Blue Ribbon Commission charge. Um, Assembly Bill 569 and Senate Bill 494, this is, uh, we've touched on this before, it's relating to moving the date of the school report card to November 30th. And this has to do with the Opportunity Schools program, which is a program that has, in my opinion, um, has yet to really get off the ground in, in the state, um, but is really meant to, for the state or the Department of Public Instruction to intervene in the lowest performing schools. And so I think they're just trying to get some of the timelines lined up um, that would allow that program um, to initiate. 
Um, Senate Bill 711, this is a pilot program to support college courses taught in high schools. And it is a grant um, process that would award grants to high school teachers um, in meeting the minimum qualifications necessary to teach dual enrollment courses. So it's essentially grant funds that high school teachers can access or we can access on their behalf so they can be um, prepared and qualified to teach college le level courses. So students that are taking the high school course could be getting both high school credit and college credit while they're in high school, right? And so we have similar examples of um, uh, transcripted credits now, but or um, students that through youth options uh, would take courses at the college level, and in some places they get high school credit, so it comes back to the high school, and this is, would be all in the high school. Um, Senate Bill 713 eliminates the requirement that schools spend common school fund dis di disbursements on instructional materials, li library books or um, school library computers and software. And right now, common school funds can only be spent on those things, and they have to be items that are managed through a library collection. So it's always felt um, restrictive, right? Um, and so I think this is that part of it is a smart move. There are some things that may limit uh, the loans that can come from uh, this trust fund. Um, but I think that the, that can be navigated. But I think getting more flexibility around the use of common school funds could be a good thing for school districts. Uh, Senate Bill 734, this is the one that we touched on this, relating to teen dating um, violence prevention education. It would require our schools to provide teen dating violence prevention education, and it establishes some criteria governing the instruction that would be provided. And again, I think th those are smart things. Um, uh, Assembly Bill 803, this relates to excluding costs funded by referenda from shared costs for the purpose of determining general equalization aids for school districts. This one um, has a lot of unknowns related to it about what the actual impact on that would be. So if you have funds from a referenda, how does that get calculated essentially into the funding formula um, is what it means. Um, Assembly Bill 805. This would exclude certain college level courses offered to high school pupils enrolled in a public school from the early college credit program. And this is really cleaning up um, this, some legislation here that there are certain courses that um, are currently kind of on the books available to students that do they, are they eligible for this? Are they not eligible this? For this is really language trying to clean up the early college credit program. So it's another one of those opportunities in high school for students to gain college credit. Um, Assembly Bill 830 creates an educational savings account for gifted and talent. We've touched on this before. Um, the change here is that Representative uh, Sandy Pope has uh, a substitute amendment increasing this to a $2 million appropriation. So it would have many more uh, opportunities for um, students in poverty that are gifted and talented to be able to build funds for a college education. Um, Assembly Bill 835 and in the Senate 690, this deals with increasing the low revenue ceiling uh, and so there are a number of dist ac districts across the state that when the QEO came in, um, we, everybody was kind of locked in at their revenue limit, um, and unless that's adjusted over time, but low um, revenue ceilings were locked in for a number of districts. Now, we're right in the middle of that, and we may see some impact if, in fact, it goes up to $9,800 by 2020, 2022, 23. Uh, may be a benefit to us, depending on kind of how our, our finances and the, the rest of the formulas work out over those years. Um, but there's a lot of advocacy to help the low revenue ceiling districts in the state through that bill. Um, Assembly Bill 872 and Senate in the Senate 746. This creates the incentive grant program for school districts that provide training for certain public safety occupation and provides completion awards for students who complete those programs. And if this goes through, I think it's an area that we'll want to explore more completely. Um, so first responders, essentially. So students that want to um, get started early, some dollars to support them while they're in high school. Uh, and then last, uh, the um, uh, DPI is conducting a hearing on February 21st in Madison to take testimony on a proposed administrative rules to restore part-time open enrollment. This is PI 36. So that was removed a number of years ago. Um, I, I think it adds a the confusing burden on school districts to have part-time counting of students, especially, and it almost becomes like a K-4 student. You're part of a student over here and part of a student over there. Um, but but there seems to be interest in adding flexibility uh, for parents and choices for parents. So we'll watch that one a bit.
And then uh, under federal, there's nothing new at this time. And then a couple notes below that, a uh, story today in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel that's really taking a look at the likely impact of the special needs vouchers um, for the coming school year and, and some um, projecting that it, it, you know, it could triple. Um, and so the cost um, to school districts could be significant as this continues to go on. So we're going to monitor that as well. And that's the legislative report. Um, congratulatory resolutions. First, on um, uh, February 12th to the 16th, so that's starting today, is I Love My Public School Week of Action. And so this is through the Wisconsin Public Education Network. So you, you'll see people wearing badges or pins or the, the, the apple that says, I love my public school. And we just wanted to acknowledge that um, because there's more and more activity supporting pu traditional public schools going on in the state. And then um, going on to, with certificates, um, Caleb Emmerich McCowan, we've already heard some of this from the Central Report, uh, but he qualified for the state swim and diving meet, which will be held this coming weekend in Madison. Caleb qualified as a diver with the West Dallas Wave, which is a combined swimming team for us. And then the following wrestlers qualified for the WIA sectional meet this coming Saturday at New Berlin West High School. From Central High School, Quentin Brown at 106, Dustin Diebitz at 195, Peter Garcia at 220, and Tim Seymour at 285. And then from Nathan Hill High School, Elijah Stevens at 106, Alex Sino at 120, Brandon Baltz at 132, Marshall Rush Rushton at 138, Bryden Jordan at 145, Peyton Mako at 160, Cody Kibler at 170, Sam Kastner at 182, and Josiah Ortiz at 195. <coughs> at Nathan Hill High School, um, they're hosting the Greater Metro Conference Gymnastics Meet this Friday, and that begins at 5 o'clock. Uh, in WIA Girls Basketball, Central plays in the WIA Regional Tournament, tournament tomorrow night at Bradley Tech in Milwaukee, and Nathan Hale which received a number three seed in their sectional, will play Racine Park at Nathan Hale on Friday night. So both be games begin at seven, and we wish both teams luck in the WIAA State playoffs. And then the following athletes from Central High School received all Woodland Conference recognition for, for the winter sports season. This is Quentin Brown, first place in wrestling. Julian Rivera, first place in wrestling. <coughs> Dustin um, Diebitz, first place in wrestling. Tim Seymour, second place in wrestling. Caleb e e Emmert McCowan, first place diving, and he set a new conference scoring record in diving. The following athletes from Nathan Hale High School received all greater Metro Conference recognition for winter sports season. Marshall Rustin, first place in wrestling. Peyton Mako, first place in wrestling. Josiah Ortiz, first place in wrestling. Brian Jordan, second place in wrestling. Sam Kastner, second place in wrestling. And then the following athletes from Nathan Hill High School received recognition as all Greater Metro Conference Scholar Athlete for the winter sports season. Peyton Mako and Brandon Baltz in wrestling. Olivia Dufay in gymnastics. Zoe Berzik, um, Kellyanne Sotiros, Madeline Lawson, Kristen Swoford, and Abigail Arena in girls basketball. And Daniel Tabasca in boys basketball. That finishes congratulatory resolutions. And then just a couple quick updates for me. Um, on, uh, at our meeting on January 22nd, we um, heard some comments about, you know, the sunsetting of the elementary sibling rule. And, you know, that came up in later in that same meeting in a workshop. And essentially it's too late for us in the planning cycles that we use in the school district to be able to consider any changes at this point. Um, we've already had 4K information sessions and all those boundary information has all been sent to um, parents. We also heard advocacy in public comments at our last meeting for a common spring break. And at that meeting, then we also worked through some of the calendar questions. And um, we'll be presenting the board with some um, calendar options for 1920 that include a um, spring break that aligns more to the CESA 1 areas, uh, because that does seem to be a growing chorus of school districts moving to that last week of March. It has some implications for things like voting, but I think we can navigate some of that. And then um, we also had public comment about the PTA carnival that was um, yesterday, um, on February 11th. And even though they, they thought their attendance was quite a bit down due <coughs> to weather, um, because both on you know not having school on Friday and not being able to get the final announcements out and then Saturday morning being a bit of a surprise. But it was still um, <coughs> a really good event. It, it felt, um, at least to me, uh, much, much better done than a year earlier. The games that, you know, each school PTA put together were more creative, uh, more professional, uh, and the layout of the field house at Central just 
flowed better to me. So I, did, I had a good time and got to walk around with the mayor and we judged the various games in the booths and I don't know if I won anything in the silent auction yet, but <laughs> <laughs> if I did, I'm sure they'll find me. Um, <laughs> and then a, a last reminder, and we've talked about it before, I mean, we're in the budget planning process for next year. Um, and so we're um, finalizing enrollment projections, which turns into revenue projections, which turns into staffing projections. And you know, you always start out with more things that you'd like to see in the budget than you have revenue for. It's just, it's a perennial moment in budget planning, but um, budgets are always about priorities, but we're definitely in a much better shape than last year and in particular two years ago. Uh, but <coughs> all of those normal processes are <coughs> going forward again to get ready for next year. And that completes my report. Questions for Dr. Lexman? Seeing none. Move on to the President's report. All I have this evening is our uh, upcoming calendar. Following tonight's meeting, we have a workshop on the strategic planning and going deeper into that strategic plan for 216 through 2021. Following that, we have a closed session uh, meeting. Next Monday, the 19th, we have a student wor services workshop dealing with special education, school psychologists, counselors, social workers, and the nursing services. And following that, we have another workshop on business services and a discussion on the small territory transfer petition that we heard some comments uh, by New Berlin residents this evening. Next regularly scheduled board meeting is February 26th. Following that meeting, we will have a business services workshop on the 216-217 audit. And on Monday, March 12th, our regular board of education meeting and followed, that, followed by a business services workshop dealing with the enrollment, staffing, and budget projections for 218-219. Just a reminder to the public that all of our meetings are open to the public and televised. Our workshops are not televised, but they are open to the public, and you are willing to attend those. Uh, anybody from the board have anything coming up in the community they'd like to share? Seeing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. We have two items, 9.1, the approval of the middens from January 22nd and our February 5th special meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. And then 9.2, the employment summary and supplemental contracts. Does any board member need either of those separated out? Seeing none, we can take those as a group. Move to approve. Thank you. Second. 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 Any final questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Consent agenda passes. We'll move on to our action item. We have three <coughs> this evening. First one, 10.1, is the West Dallas West Milwaukee Education for Employment Plan. And we will turn it over to Gwen Scoyan. Good evening. I didn't mean to bypass you, but I figured you were just going to throw it over there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so last month, um, we were, it was last month, right, that we were here for the workshop for education for employment and the CTE teachers, counselors, and so on um, had the workshop. Oh, I think I just that wrong here. So I just want to talk very briefly, and um, if you have, if you're online, if you go to our district website, that's probably the best way to just kind of summarize that. And actually, the three young students really summarized education for employment <laughs> plan already. So when they were talking about their service learning and just the public speaking skills they're working on, all the responsibility and everything that is in that program, that is exactly what we were talking about, K-12, truly education for employment. So on the district website, one of the links is college and career readiness. And that is right at the top. And the third one down is planning for high school and beyond education for employment. And it's, it's displayed here. You can see it's everything from the academic career planning, advanced placement courses, business and community partnerships, information on career clusters, career and technical education departments, the career and technical education student organizations, including, and they also do service learning along with NHS and um, the, the wonderful organizations we have at the high school. Information for students and parents on jobs in demand in Wisconsin, and most particularly in our area in southeastern Wisconsin. And post-secondary training options, service learning and community engagement, work-based learning youth apprenticeship, College, uh, Stuck College Now program, which is the revamped youth, youth options program, and employability skills. So really, all of those together make up our education for employment plan, if you will. So the presentation that I shared with you 
you know, we're not going to go through that. That's the full presentation. You can look at the links. It goes through all the different pieces of the website. And that will be updated and annually and brought to review and post on the website. And uh, we continue with different pieces as, as we work through different um, parts of Redefining Ready, which will be um, talked about a little bit later tonight. Also looking at those three areas of college ready, career ready, and life ready. So as things roll out and change, this will just be continually updated and live for, again, all stakeholders, students, parents, business partners, post-secondary partners, and kind of a one-stop shop, if you will, for information about planning for high school and beyond. Any questions about the education for employment plan? Um, when you go into those, or when anybody goes into those particular sites, um, mm -hmm. is there any way of tracking how many people go into a particular site? Mm -hmm. Not that I know of. Okay, thank you. You can't, I don't think our, you can do that with websites, yep. I don't think mm -hmm. ours is set up like that, but okay. certainly it's feedback that we can ask Brown about. Okay, thank you. And one of the big goals right now that I really want to work on is <coughs> the parent information piece, and I'm not sure if I mentioned that last month or not. So, for example, this Thursday night we have sixth grade preview night at the three intermediate schools, and I'll be presenting just very briefly on college and career readiness and showing just bits and pieces of this to uh, kind of plant the seed to parents about looking ahead and, and trying to think of all different aspects as they start conversations with their children about planning and thinking about high school options and what they want to do after they graduate. Yeah. Just a comment. I think you've done a marvelous job of taking something that we see every three years as a report to DPI and making it visual for the parent. And getting it to the website, and it's really very user friendly, and it's so important. The whole purpose of schools is to get kids ready for what they're going to do with their real life. And this is a great step forward in that, and <coughs> communicating it to parents in the way that you have is just a really fine job. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sue? You have been such an outstanding person at reaching out to our community and bringing our community in. And it's it's being felt all the way down through our, from our high school, which is where you started. And, you know, last week, I think we had um, Jefferson School, and they were talking about how they were connecting and reaching out to uh, their families and business people, and how to bring those people in. And it all comes together under your umbrella or the district's umbrella You've done just an outstanding job at showing people how to reach out. Because you, we always wanted to do it, but you, you need the skills at, to, to be able to do it. And you have, been, all of you, have, have shown us a path. So thank well, you. Thank you. And I think a lot of work has al always been going on. It's just now communicating that 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 work has been going on as, as part of it. So that's uh, wonderful that the building principals are sharing ideas and um, yeah, a lot of this is really gaining traction because of their efforts. Well, it really connects well with the PI 26 mm -hmm. that's coming up. We move to approve this. Mm -hmm. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any last minute questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. That passes. Move on to 10.2, the Technical Excellence Scholarship Recipients. Okay, and this is always a fun night. So we did have a total of nine applicants for the Technical Excellence Scholarship. This is awarded by Wisconsin to um, students pursuing a two-year degree in one of the 16 technical colleges in the state of Wisconsin. And the number of student recipients is based on the population, and this year we uh, can award three to both Nathan Hale and three to West Dallas Central. So as you can see on the information, we have, I'm not sure if I'm going to be pronouncing these all correctly, so um, Azalea Beeman is going to Waukesha County Technical College in Bakery and Pastry. She was the, the top of the point system. And Cole Krepsky, Milwaukee Area Technical College and Auto Mechanics. And the third from Nathan Hale is Kale Neff, 
Milwaukee Area Technical College Auto Collision Repair. The alternate is Dylan Wasatki from, and he is attending Milwaukee Area Technical College as diesel mechanic. And then from West Dallas Central, we have Jack Dornick, Fox Valley Technical College. He is pursuing Fab Tech. Dayton Quick, Milwaukee Area Technical College and Auto Mechanics. And Julian Rivera, Waukesha County Technical College Automation Engineer. And then two alternates, Edgar Prado, Waukesha County Technical College and Graphic Design, and Brendan Plank. And right now he's considering UW-Waukesha Engineering. So that's a uh, little gray area, but um, he's, he's listed as an alternate right now. And um, I just want to mention also that of the students, there are two students that are officially in the Department of Workforce Development and Youth Apprenticeship Program who have worked during high school, released from school in that program for a local business partner, gaining those skills, and they will be certified um, through the Department of Workforce Development, and they are pursuing occupations that they've been practicing during high school. So it really is showing that connecting piece to students exploring their careers and really deciding what they would like to do through academic career planning and education for employment. Questions? No? Nine students for the application seems a, a little low, but I guess I don't know what percentage of our, our students are looking to go to the technical education, or I mean the technical sector right now. So does that add up? Are they, is there an issue with getting information out? Is there not a lot of interest from students for application? The number of applicants is pretty consistent from the last two years. So mm -hmm. this, when this rolled out, I would agree. I would guess that there should be more in my opinion as well. So we do, it has been marketed to the counselors, the CTE teachers, reminded, you know, literally the counselors are tapping kids on the shoulder and so on. I do think sometimes students think with the Promise program through the technical college system that they assume they would automatically get accepted to that and not have to pay for any education. Mm. And that's not always the case. You have to go through the criteria. So mm. I, I, I wonder if that might be part of it? I'm not really sure, but it is the numbers are pretty consistent with what we've seen in the past. Okay. I would echo his concerns. Uh, considering all the different areas that students can come from, it's kind of hard to think that it's only nine students that applied, and especially because it isn't just $500 a year. This mm -hmm. thing is $2,500 a year for three years. Mm -hmm. Sizable. They don't have to have letters of recommendation. Uh, I think we need to put more of a bug in teachers' ear and students' ear so that they know what's coming with this and how much money is out there to reap. Mm -hmm. It should be much more competitive than it is. But I'm mm -hmm. certainly happy for those that got them. Those are really good students. That's, that's good to see. But um, students, if, if they're not taking advantage of it, they really need to know what they're passing up. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that some of Gwen's really push to get in front of as many parents as possible yes. as well, because mm -hmm. as a parent, if I had known that was out there, I might be pushing my 17 or 18 year old a little mm -hmm. harder to make sure they get that application in and complete. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will just say as a parent of a senior and a junior in college that I had to push my kids. And I, <coughs> if you look at the scholarship committees that I've sat on in the last couple of years, the applicants are way down. They, they're not doing the work for the application. Last year, the coalition was calling us. Do you have anybody you know who you can get to fill out applications? So how do we make the kids do that? I don't know, but we've got to do it because there's so much money out there. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And I think, again, the more the parents know about what those opportunities yep. are, you know, the more they can help guide their mm -hmm. students and, and mm -hmm. help us with those efforts. Yep. No. So <clears throat> piggybacking off of that, uh, do we have things for parents in the district to be able to provide them all the, these are all the scholarships out there if your kid's interested in this or that or the other thing it's that right they can the provide right. them the web information for it? It's right on the website. Mm -hmm. You can go to either school website, you click on scholarships and it has a full list with due dates, correct, what is, what, Steve, it's so completely out there, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I was saying it's not working. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> <asking>. <laughs> <laughs> They're brought up it for the students in their individual planning conference. They mm -hmm. are, I mean, you know, you, you put as And the parents are there for that, the individual mm -hmm. planning yeah. conference. And I can tell you for this scholarship, I met with all the CTE teachers and the counselors, hand out packets, emailed them, followed up with numerous emails and reminders, and they were talking to the students, large groups of students. So 
It's <laughs> yeah. and I think some of it could be, you know, now that we know who the winners are, that opportunity to go back to the schools and have them introduced at the school level. And, mm -hmm. you know, the bigger deal you make out of, you know, lots of students when they see a lengthy scholarship application are probably going, oh, I'm probably never even going to get the money anyway, so what difference mm -hmm. does it make? And then mm -hmm. they don't put in the effort. So right. to mm -hmm. actually see the real students who are the kids they've been sitting next to in class for, you know, 15 years be the ones who actually earned this money and are going to be able to follow through on their plan is a way that might help really get students to realize no these aren't strangers on the street you know they're your classmates that are actually earning this money and I should explain just very quickly the rating process which was brought to the board three years ago which follows just the HEAB guidelines the students receive a certain number of points for current technical education classes based on the grade they receive. So the more classes they receive, the higher grades, higher point system, right? Mm -hmm. They also receive a points if they're in work-based learning, which feeds into youth apprenticeship. And the third component would be being involved in the career and technical student organizations. So those are really, it's really a direct link. When you see the applicants, it is, they took the classes, they explored the careers, they were in youth apprenticeship, they were in Skills USA or um, FCCLA, the young girl that's going into bakery and pastry. So it really, it is a direct, you can just see the direct connection to their pathway. So the earlier in the student's career that we get that information into their mm -hmm. hands and the hands of the families, the more likely that students will take advantage of taking the courses that they need in order to make these opportunities a reality. Uh, move to approve. Thank you. Second. Second. Last minute questions. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That passes. We'll move on to 10.3, the co-op renewal for gymnastics. <coughs> so um, the board has seen this one two years ago. Um, so this is renewing for the next two years. So 18, 19, 19, 20, the gymnastics co-op on that is, is centered at Hale, but includes West Isles, Hale, West Isles Central, and Divine, Divine Savior, Holy Angels. And um, this year, just if you're curious, there's 12 students from Hale, four at Central, four from DHSA. Um, this makes up that team, and um, both athletic directors uh, wanted to see this co-op continue. Questions? Motion approved. So moved. Second. Second. Last chance for a question or comment? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. We are renewed. Board member ideas for agenda items or workshops? Yep. I have two of them. Uh, one is regarding this whole thing surrounding New Berlin's request. W next week we'll That's have coming it. up, right. And I, and I know you're probably preparing some things for us. But as the three speakers spoke tonight, this is not something we created that we wanted that sector of New Berlin no. to be part of our school district. And if, if people don't know that, I think we need to communicate that. That's what board meetings are about, to give people information about mm. what we are dealing with and how we do it. Now, as far as representation goes, for a number of years, we have had good representation from the New Berlin community with boardsmanship. This is kind of a rare time in the last two to three years where we have not, but we've had it. But the concern to me is that this came down to us from the state legislature. And, and the area that we're talking about that doesn't have a tie-in to the, to the, the title of the West Dallas, West Milwaukee School District is one-third of New Berlin, going all the way back to Loretta Drive. It's not a small piece of, of that, that you're dealing with here. On top of that, Jeff made a good comment to, in the last board meeting that I think needs some consideration. That is, Hoover sits in New Berlin. If, if something was to happen that we would approve and New Berlin would approve, New Berlin students being able and families to be part of New Berlin, New, all of New Berlin is the New Berlin School District, what happens to Hoover School? Does that get sold to New Berlin? Pet, can I ask you, can, we're kind so of getting into that workshop. I apologize. So that's kind of what I hope we're, is coming out, and I don't know if it's, is it closed or is it open? It's open. It's open. Okay. So I hope that that kind of information will come forward so that we can communicate. Secondly is about communication in general. Um, there isn't, I think we've got maybe one workshop on it this, this year. Uh, the calendar is gone. And how do we get that information out to schools on what things are coming up at their schools, at their, at their larger, at the larger area events, the spelling bees, and all that kind of stuff. I realize we've got a website for it, 
but just more and more it seems that I hear I haven't heard about that event. Why is that? What could we do to make things better communication wise? And, and the thing that really comes to light is in the last few weeks there was an excellent fundraising event called called Tonic Sofa and a very excellent four, four gentlemen a cappella group that is a national group, Grammy Award winning, has been to state fair most recently this year. They lost money because they didn't get the word out. Now between school newsletters and all these things that happened, I asked Ryan Visser about it. He said he never even heard about it. So do you just expect students to pass along the information to their parents? We shouldn't be in a situation where we actually lose district money on something we thought was going to make us money. So the communication efforts have just got to improve. I, I'll do what West Dallas, Play, West Dallas Players was sure. I've often mentioned West Dallas Players is part of the Recreation Department. How do people in the community get to know about those events without them being publicized in school newsletters? The opportunities you have. How about sell 50 tickets at a school and one goes free? Again, we'll, uh, so we'll do please, the do what you can, but we workshop. just got to start working on it. For communication. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? No? Um, I just was wondering if I would be able to get an update on the before school care that was uh, discussed uh, several months ago. Um, from my be the, be the rec uh, committee, and then an update on looking into the pay progression career ladder, whatever you want to call it, for the teachers um, or for staff in general. Um, something that we I think was in the business services committee. And the last thing I would like to to inquire about is is broadcasting our workshops when we are not walking around. So especially as Pat brought up with the fact that we have this workshop coming up regarding the New Berlin School District. I mean, some New, New Berlin uh, residents who want to be removed from our school district. Uh, it might be something that people who can't make the meeting might, might want to watch that. And so I know we've done it in the past for some of these kind of higher um, anxiety-ridden discussions that we have and I think that it's a good idea to, when we can, broadcast our workshops that we should. Uh, I think we know ahead of time if we're going to be moving around or not. And I, w I mean, I'm bringing this up as, as one example, but I really would encourage that we do it for all of our workshops that we are not physically moving that would uh, affect our audio quality because I think having a record of these things so is that, important. That's what you'd like a workshop on? If we could do that? Well, if, if, yes, a work if a workshop is necessary, yes. To televise it? Yes. Okay. You got that? Yep. Okay, we'll take a five minute recess as Ryan takes down the cameras and we'll reconvene uh, with our workshop. We are at recess. And the workshop will be over there. We are at recess. <laughs> the workshop's going to be.